Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the penultimate episode of Hangoutlander season four-ish, something like that. I'll be happy to never hear penultimate ever, ever again. Well, no, I just said it. So um, <laughs> I actually did have a tweet in my queue, and then it did, went away for some reason. It was just like, next to last episode of Outlander. <laughs> yes, I said next to last because I'm getting sick of everybody using penultimate. Nobody uses anti-penultimate. That was last week. We all think you're smart. You're not. Anywho, welcome. Hi, I'm Beth, um, and I'm eating peanut butter M&Ms, and I'm wearing a dirty um, sweatshirt. And I was just telling everyone that um, I used to dress up for Hangoutlander. Like, I used to have cute clothes and wear jewelry and stuff. That doesn't happen anymore. You guys are getting, like, my sit-around-the-house outfit today. So, um, anyway, we have some uh, new folks and some guests today. So, uh, we're going to say hello if you haven't seen them before. Say hi to them on Twitter. Um, if you want to say hi to me, I'm at B.E. Thorn on Twitter. Hey. Um, Nikki, say hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikki, and I'm wearing sweatpants for this penultimate episode of Hangout Lander. And I'm drinking some fizzy water, but I put a little something something in it because <gasps> it's been a Monday. Um, and that was, it's been an episode of Outlander. So I'm very excited to talk uh, about it, and I'm very excited to see all of our friends here tonight. Uh, Elise, why don't you go and say hello? I'm Elise. Uh, I'm drinking seltzer because I have to get up at four in the morning, so I'm like, I'm not drinking booze. And I also am in sweatpants. Yay! Um, I haven't read Drums of Autumn. I'm going to wait until the season is over, but now it, I might have to wait another goddamn year because <laughs> I'm sure we're going to talk about this later, <laughs> but it doesn't seem like it's all going to get wrapped up. So there's that. All right, Andy, say hello. Hi, I'm Andy. And uh, I just got back from Milan today. So I've been waiting an hour. I waited an hour and a half for my bag because it's cold in New York, everyone. So there's that. And she's yes, here. She's here. I to made talk about it. Me and my my grandma's cross stitch. We made Aww. it today. <laughs> Aww, Thanks, I have Gina. a I have a uh, what's it called? It's not cross stitch. Needlepoint of Paris that my my great aunt Louise did. It's in the other room. I should bring oh, it. No. It's I almost like being there. It might be needlepoint. Sorry, nanny. Oh, I don't man. know what your craft is. Needlepoint's <laughs> cool, man. I look at it all the time. I'm like, that's kind of that's kind of cool. I wish I could do that, but I can't. Anyway, so let's talk about things that Brie can't do, like, you know, stay in character. Hi. It's time to talk about Providence. <laughs> oh, before we get rolling, ha use hashtag Hangoutlander if you want to be a part of conversation. You can also add us, but most likely you should use the hashtag. Yes. All right. Also, I'm saying hi to everybody in YouTube as we go, if I can remember to check it. That's me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a weird mood tonight. I uh, Let's talk about this episode. I want to get started. Uh, uh, Nikki, you recap this episode. What do you want to talk about first? I'd like to talk about Brianna first, but you 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 lead this discussion. <laughs> uh, uh, um, do we want to go in order? What do you want to talk about Brianna? Which part of Brianna? Because <laughs> there's a few angles we could go. Jail, her and Lord John Gray. I have to say, if I'm going to talk about Brianna in this episode, the first thing I need to just get off my chest is that I don't still don't find it believable that this woman who was like recently, recently raped and she's been going through all of this stuff and she's trying to decide what she, what it is she wants to do. And she's not even, you know, all of this hullabaloo would not want to go face her rapist in jail before he's hung. I find that really unbelievable. Yeah. And then and then when she gets there, there's this whole idea that she's there to give him some sort of absolution for her own self, to give him forgiveness for her own, you know, edification. And yet she gets in there and she's like, <laughs> you're never going to know this kid. And like, you're going to hang by the neck. And she's like, really, you know, She's destructive in that moment and not trying to like do something good for her own self. And so I don't, th the motivations are so cloudy and so strange that it still remains one of the dumbest character choices I've ever seen. Yes. It was confusing in the book 
as to why she would want to do that. So it's confusing on the screen. Um, at least in the book, she had some sort of moral compass and was trying to save Steven when they knew the place was going to blow up. Mm -hmm. In this version, they didn't, she didn't give a shit that Stephen Bonnet was going to be blown up. She was just leaving. So that made it confusing, but I still appreciated the jail scene. Um, I yeah. Too. I think Lord John is like, why the hell do you want to go? Like, Lord John should... is like, these fucking Frasers. <laughs> right. He's like, no one, like, everyone should just listen to Lord John. If he has some sort of You're advice, not wrong. Like, it's just probably. Listen to Lord John. <laughs> He's probably but, right. But also, I is anyone else, I want to see Brianna just marry Lord John. I want to see everyone marry Lord John. He could have a harem, like just set them all up. Uh, but because like, I was like, forget Roger, just marry this guy. I mean, who cares if he's gay? He's awesome. I think that I is the plan him. thus far. Yeah, I, I'm ready. I'm like, sign me up, Lord John. <laughs> Could definitely be a sister wife situation. Yes. <laughs> it would be. He's a great conversationalist. He'll still take care of you. And he's got some banging fur coats that he wears. So. And he's like perceptive. Like he understands how she's feeling even when she doesn't say it. And he yeah. understands when she's lying. And he's just like this perceptive, smart, worldly guy who's very attractive. And I would, yeah. What is it? Gay men will uh, gay men that video with gay men will marry your girlfriends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like this is definitely a Lord John situation. Yeah, we will marry your girlfriends. Yeah, and we she will like it a lot more, <laughs> and they will love it. Yeah, I'd be down with that. I'd be fine with that. But I, I, I just don't. I still think that the script was so convoluted. Purely Amuse just said this script didn't work. That's the whole thing right there. It's, it doesn't work at all. Her entire motivation for going to see him is then, then not what she does when she gets there. Yeah. Her being a brat to him was like, what? You're not, you have no, there's no reason for you to be here if you were just going to show up and be an asshole. Like, I don't and know. And then like, I'm going to raise my baby to be a good person. But I'll take that jewel from you because I might need it. <laughs> the actual... The actual line, I'm going to raise my baby to be a good person, is something that a seventh grader would write. I mean, like if I was doing a skit for kids camp, a summer <laughs> camp, and we were doing like a suicide scene or something, and I was like, I'm pregnant with your baby, and I'm going to raise it to be a good person, and I'm 12. It's a really intense I mean, summer camp. I, we did do that. We had a suicide skit when I was in the seventh grade. And like, Whoa. I, oh, goodness. I know. It was a big That's deal. Deep. Anyway, I know. But my point is, still stands, it's cheesy as hell. Like, a professional writer wrote that line. And I think it is the dumbest thing that this show has ever said. And Mary Hawkins was in a whole season. Guys, it was so <laughs> stupid. Okay, I'm with you on Mary Hawkins, but I bought it. I bought it. I'm sorry. I mean, something else like, this child will never know you, will never know your name, and will never know anything about like there's there's going to be none of you in this baby like anything that's not i'm gonna raise it to be a good person i just i couldn't handle it, it was so stupid i don't did know she say, I don't... like this baby will never know your name she did say that but then she said i'm gonna raise it to be a good person and i can't get over how stupid that line is it's so facile i just... hate it just the thought that she'd even just go and I don't know, like if I was raped by someone and pregnant with his baby, like, yeah, I'm going to go and show him. Like, I, I don't know. It was like, oh, here's your baby. But also, haha. -ha. Like, I don't know. So it was just weird. We all know that she does this or they wrote it this way because Stephen Bonnet is probably going to live. No spoilers. I haven't read I read Fiery Cross, but I don't remember anything that happened except some dirty diapers. Well, also, so, like, if they didn't verify it in this episode that he's dead, then I'm like, well, you're alive. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I know mean, he is him being out. I was still fully believed, like, I still fully believed that they could have brought Blackjack back. Like, maybe yeah, he was a corpse, maybe he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so if Stephen Bonnet comes back, the entire, like, conceit is that he will be after his son or daughter or what, whoever she has. And so I he's never going to I don't think he gives a fuck. I know, but he they gave did, her the jewel. They, he gave her the jewel. He said for his maintenance. And there's this whole like zoom in on Ed Spiller's face where he's like having this 
he's just very intense looking at her about it before he gives her the jewel. And I really think that that's kind of the point is that eventually something is going to pop up with whether or not um, that baby is his and what he does in relation to thinking that it might be. And that's what they're leaving it open for. And if he didn't know that she was pregnant, that would never come back and they would never bring Stephen Bonnet back and it wouldn't matter. But I still think that they should have found a better way to get her her motivation for being in that jail cell. And then what she says once she's there should have been way different and way better. Because it was stupid. Thoughts? Yes. <laughs> sure. Um, that was a big law, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But we need to talk about that. That was it. I we thought need to talk about reasons. Sophie, though, because if you guys uh, were on our Instagram and you saw the scene that I put on the story, I don't know if anybody has guessed what we need to discuss in that particular scene, but I didn't see it. It's where she first gets to Wilmington with Lord John and he's like, is she, and she says, if you ask me if I'm, I'm sure I want to do this one more time, I'm going to scream or whatever. Sophie's delivery was so bad in the entire episode, I could not handle it. I don't understand how the girl how the reverted job. back to this. I mean, she did okay in some of these episodes, and then she reverted back. She's so breathy. Everything's like this. And she's like, it's like her throat hurts. It's so bad. And I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how there's no. not a director directing her out of that type of delivery. I don't understand how we're still okay with it. I don't, I don't know how anybody has been like, she did so good. I don't, mm -mm, I don't understand. I saw earlier a tweet in our feed that was like, it's been great to see her grow. And I was like, have we? It feels like she's reverted this last <laughs> episode into her monotone, no face, facial expression what I'm doing right now. Um, it's, it's just not interesting to watch. And, you know, we're back at it again. Like you said, there needs to be a director and there needs to be someone to just, hey, let's try it a little more animated. Let's do another take with you really, you know, overworked about this or, you know, like anything, give her something. She's not doing it. It's well, not interesting. Heidi, Heidi just said in the YouTube chat that apparently she filmed a cut where she was in tears the whole way through. Yeah, Who's there's that? the thing on Harper's Bazaar Who's that, like, that? She's in tears and she couldn't stop crying after. She Who's said that, that about lots of scenes. She said that she also filmed a whole cut of the rape scene that she did this whole thing where it was on her yeah, face. Yeah, they, they did a close up the whole rape scene apparently. That so are they on the extras? <laughs> I'm going to just, do the editors hate Sophie? Maybe. Do the she I mean, might hate Sophie because it sounds like she's doing multiple takes and there are some questionable. I don't know if the whole like segment with two directors things goes as far as the edit room, like you get to right. edit your own episodes type of deal. But yeah, it sounds like there's choices being made in edit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Somebody just said they think that Kat is a worse actor than Sophie. What? Look, mm, no. well, mishmash 911. <laughs> I appreciate no, no. that comment, but I must <laughs> vehemently disagree with you. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't think there has been any other actress on Outlander specifically that is as bad as Sophie. And that includes Mrs. Fitz and the aforementioned Mary Hawkins. <laughs> Mrs. Fitz. Over actor Mrs. Fitz. No, Mrs. Fitz was fine. But Mary Hawkins was not. She was well, yeah, Mary Hawkins was the worst, but she was also like um, the worst. Jay Lachey, on Twitter, Jay Lachey pointed out that Sophie has kind of regressed to once she's since she's arrived to River Run, which kind of brings up a good point. They probably shot in like chunks, like yeah, everything yeah. at River Run was shot. So that might have been earlier in her schedule of shooting. And she has since come out of that. But we are seeing it out of. I don't know. Whatever. It's do you, not great. Do you think do you think they're kind of maybe that uh, the only thing I can think of is that they directed her in this sort of regressed like face like not no affect sort of I, that's the only thing that I can think of because in real life she is so animated and so lovely and I just don't understand like where I the think they directed it as she was supposed to be like battling with the motions and it came out as very like stiff and forced but then she's battling emotions in every episode 
everybody's yeah. always battling emotions. And so every time she battles emotions, she just does this thing where she's just <laughs> nothing. And that's it. And you're just like, oh my God, anything else. Lauren Lyle is is telling the horses to go on with more and expression more on her face. <laughs> oh, I did like when she's like, walk on. I'm like, you don't want the horse to walk. <laughs> you want I, the horse to run. I mean, I just, there, there's there's nothing behind what she's doing at, ever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if she picked it up from Lord like John Gray and she was like, I got to go super British on this and just have no feelings. He shows more <laughs> feeling and just a look than yeah. a line, an entire, you know, soliloquy from her. So I don't know if it's going to change. It probably won't. Maybe she'll get better as time goes on. But as soon as she like, as soon as, soon as he pissed ass. her, as soon as he pissed her off, I bought it. I, I got I got anger out of that. Yeah, I mean, bitchy bratty stuff, but I was I totally like, did not get bitchy bratty. I got like, fuck you. <laughs> With the exception of Beth's least favorite line. <laughs> <laughs> now I hate I'm going to raise her to be a good person. Um, so that happened. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to read a little bit on Twitter. I can't ever talk and read at the same time. I know. Same thing. <laughs> Pretty much everyone agrees with us. It's not changing. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, over in the Mohawk camp, Roger has arrived and is sort of living his life and is being kind of yelled at, which opposes, kind of juxtaposes what happens in the book, which is where he's a little more a part of the crowd. He's kind of seen as a guy who's helping the women or, you know, into him in the fact that he's helpful and handsome. I did like that, like, he's like, oh, you speak French? Get me out of here. I'm like, whoa, hey, oh. <laughs> <Me>? <laughs> she said, like, three sentences. It's like, chill. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you're just, like, looking for any lifeline. And she was, was like, can you help me get out of here? She's like, I'm literally holding a baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just sets up something that never pays off, which we can talk about when we get to that final scene. But it felt like a, another missed opportunity where in the book, I'd hate to be the person who's like, in the book, this happened. But there was more of, you know, um, a relationship with him and these people and less he was just a prisoner and they're going to push him in the hut and hurt yeah. him after awesome. like a day. It seemed yeah. like it was like, yeah. you've learned nothing. I was like, you've learned nothing. You've told him to get water one time. How fast do you want him to learn? Yeah. yeah. And then they were like, point was rude. I was like, someone should probably tell him. Having him like, why did they spend so much time with him walking through the woods? They, they, could, have spent, they could have spent that time showing him, in the camp, spending time with them um, and letting them get to know him, letting him get to know some of their customs and letting them like letting that those animosities and those affinities develop naturally instead of forcing them into one episode. And didn't you say that it seemed like um, I can't remember this particular native woman's name. Joe hate Joe. It's Hay almost like Jonathan, but yeah, that didn't bother me. There were like Joe no John name. or some Joe John, I think, or something like oh, that. Yeah, but you said, I think you said that she had a type. Obviously, she's into white guys, but white like European men. Yeah, but I think he does too. He's always into like women who have babies already. There's like <laughs> the woman on the ship, right. and there's this girl, oh, okay. the ancestor, <laughs> and then there's going to be you know he was at one point into Claire. You know, he was all he was into Claire in season two. Let's be real, he like really was into Claire more than in the book. Brie. I was like, oh, you're like real fucking into Claire, <laughs> like, and like eventually like, he'll be into Brie. But like he finds the woman with the without a man, but also a baby, and he like latches on and he's like, help me or let me help you. Let's help each other. He's yeah, he's real big into to helping the uh, the parent the mothers. I'm surprised he didn't kiss her on the mouth like he does Fiona and that other lady from the ship. Yeah, he loves a good un. Welcome kiss for no reason. Um, Is that and a thing? Did I miss that? Yes, he kisses okay. all these women on the mouth for no reason <laughs> in Drums of Autumn. Before what is he, he like the guy from Price is Right? Like, it's okay. very weird. <laughs> no, wasn't that Richard Dawson? That was yeah, who would just like make out family feud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dawson. 
Oh, and we know nothing really about. I can't even say her name. Jonah. They Jonathan. didn't ever say her name, which bothered me. They didn't say. They did anything. one time, and that's how did I they? knew how to look it up. He okay. she says it to him, and I was I'm like, look, I'm look it up. Well, it doesn't like, matter. I won't be able to pronounce it. But and the guy with the blue spiky hair who later played a larger part. I his name starts with a K, but I had to look it up. It's a T, I think, because I also no, had to look it up. It's it's a T. The the that was the guy that was in, from the first episodes. You called him Tawadi, but that was the dude from like episode what four well, when they kill those people. Wrong, Damn you, IMDb! <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. Well, the, this brings up the whole issue is that we don't know their names. Yes. And this is episode 12 yes. of the season. They've been a part of it since the, you know, episode three or four. We don't know who they are. Yeah. We don't know how they're related. We don't know what their history is. And they don't tell us any of that. It's Kahir Kahirotan. I'm See, sorry. Okay. Kahirotan. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's John. John. I don't care. The it's point... The the, she's the actor's still, name totally is right. Brendan. We can use that. <laughs> the, the the full point is that we have an entire. They you know at the end of the episode, Matt and Meryl are patting themselves on the back about you know spending time doing ton a, a year's worth of research. Literally, this is what he said: a year's worth of re research on how to build long houses and what the Mohawk did in them. And they spent a month in a Scottish park with these long houses that they built and this whole village that they built and it's fully dressed. And it's just this amazing thing that they pop you into the, yeah, the scenery was great. It's it really super was great. I appreciated the long house on top of the stairs. It was really pretty. Let me tell you something though. I didn't give a shit about any of those characters. I didn't know anything about any of them. I didn't know uh, what, whether or not they were, going to kill Roger cere ceremonially, like kill him or whether or not they wanted to use him as a slave, whether or not they were going to marry him off to someone, whether or not the gauntlet was meant to make him into a Mohawk. Yeah. And then I didn't he was get going the gauntlet to... either. I was wondering if we were going to get that later. Well, you know, I was like, you just like beat the shit out of him. Then you're like, Oh, you're still a captain. Yeah. So I was like, is this like a test that you failed? Yeah. Exactly. Obviously, there, that It's meant to be there, but it's okay. not there. And they even had, the the plot device of having one of them speak perfect English. So it's not as if he couldn't have had conversations with this man in the two or three episodes he's been walking around with them in the woods. Nothing was built up so that we understood what Roger's place was in this in this place. And what do they do? They throw him in a hut with another white guy. White guy. Who tells the story of how mm -hmm. he falls in love with a native woman that we don't see. See. We yeah. don't see any of it. We don't care about that, really. I didn't even care about him. Oh, a flashback yeah. scene would have been so nice there. It would have been yeah. so nice. And that's that's what I brought up in my review. I brought up the episode of La season two in Westworld, which everyone talked about who right. watched that show, and a lot of people who don't, focuses on one Native American character and it's essentially a bottle episode where they go and tell the story of who this person is and why these people matter within the story as a whole. Why didn't Outlander just steal the idea? It's fine. Like, no, like telling a story in a flashback is not reinventing the wheel, but it would have made us care when we came to that final scene of why she threw herself on the pyre, why who the brother, the lover, whoever that guy is holding the kid. Like uh, yeah, we don't I was, even know. I was like, who are you? <laughs> no one knows. Like literally on Twitter, everyone's like, "Who is it? Is his brother?" Oh no, no one knows. Nobody but knows. You didn't do any work, and don't tell me. I don't want to ever hear a story on Outlander from someone's mouth again. Like just show me in really great visual storytelling why this matters to me. Yep. Don't yep. give me a voiceover. Do give not me give me stakes. Father Alex. Give me the stakes of yeah. that particular character and why it matters whether or not he di lives or dies. It didn't yeah. matter. To, it, that that was the other thing. If they wanted to show it through Roger's pain over this whole thing, why does Roger care whether or not this guy lives or dies? Honestly. Honestly, the, he's sitting there talking about how stupid the guy is. Why does he care if he lives or dies? I don't care. They didn't tell me the story. And, and we're supposed to like absorb it through Roger's pain. We haven't been given any real indication of why it matters to Roger. If that's all that matters to them. If I don't mm -hmm. think it should be. 
Yeah. I feel like they should be telling the the wider, the bigger story. But if they're just going to tell it for Roger, they didn't even do a good job of that Mm -mm. because he barely spent one night in a hut with this guy. Yeah. And they changed it to show us that he escapes and gets Mm -hmm. away and then has some sort of like crisis of conscience for conscience for no reason Mm -hmm. after he gave us this huge lookout for number one speech. And then he goes back to near certain death. He probably would have been killed for doing some shit like that. He won't be because we know he's not dead. Right. You know, like and the whole I, thing. I have to say that the, when I was watching this episode, <clears throat> I knew that Jamie and Claire weren't going to be in it um, because I could. I just knew they weren't going to be. But I still kept anticipating that they were going to show up in that Mohawk village hmm. yeah, halfway the through end. the episode. I was hoping they would show up when he was escaping. I I needed, I kept expecting them to show up um, because first of all, they do in the book. They're there for that moment. Yeah. But also it needed forward m- movement. There needed to be more momentum for Roger to do something than just his own need to escape and, and help this guy or whatever. There needed to be more going on. And that we only have one episode left and there's, a, a baby lot. needs to be born. Like there's so much there's left to do. And um, I was really disappointed that they chose to go this route and they chose to give us this very long, protracted, emotional moment where a character sacrifices herself to be with someone that she loves. They've literally never shared screen time. Mm-mm. And we were meant to care a whole, whole lot about this woman putting herself on the pyre but we only saw it through the pain of Roger and this other native character whose name I don't know. Um, and not any in any way through her own story. It didn't relate to anything she'd even done while she was on screen. It was really bananas. I, I've their, their storytelling yeah. ca- capabilities are getting worse and worse yeah. and worse. They've made some weird decisions over the past few seasons, but I think this is arguably one of the weirdest choices. And I thought manipulated the viewer just in an effort to tell the story how they wanted to do it. That music, which people have pointed out has been used in Platoon in a like jokey scene and multiple other TV shows, movies. Okay. To just crank it up was like, Ridiculous. Can I, can I, I just have to address that song for just one minute <laughs> yeah. because I'm a musician. I'm a music teacher. I'm very familiar with the composer, Samuel Barber. I've sung his stuff hundreds of times. So when literally the first note played, I said, dear God, adagio for strings. <laughs> like it is one of the greatest hits of classical music. It is a very evocative piece. It's emotional. It's beautiful. I love it. Right. Mm -hmm. However, there are like a thousand other classical pieces that are as evocative that don't make anyone with any sort of musical background go this song like like it just pulled me right out of any emotional feeling I was having for it. Not only that, there is a choral arrangement of that piece that uses the text of the Latin Requiem Mass. This dude was a priest. Oh, like, why would that. you why would you not use that one? I was like, right. why didn't they use the unused date? It's the same music, but Latin choral from a requiem mass. Like it's that's a no-brainer. Yeah. There isn't there a music supervisor? I get why you wanted to use it, but a music supervisor's job is to be like, guys, I know you love this, but how about this? You know, like I, I was just I love the piece, but it just made me mad. Yeah. I thought it was emotionally manipulative. Yeah, yeah, the I song it. on it. I cried, <laughs> I cried it a lot for you. But that's what it they worked. wanted. That's what they wanted is you to have kind of like this manipulated emotional moment with characters that you don't really care about, and that song allowed them to do that. Don't no, aren't you kind of like irritated thing. that they manipulated you that way? Nope, not at all. They went <laughs> last to the Mohicans for the whole thing. 
they literally so you did. You care about those characters. Last, no, you Mohicans. don't, though. You don't know fucking anything. I love Last of the Mohicans. It's in, like, my top 30 movies, I would say. But you don't give a... Sh- you only give a shit about, like, the bad Native Americans who are killing, like, the chick's father. You don't give a shit about any of the two guys that are with <gasps> Daniel Day-Lewis what? and the actual Last of the Mohicans. All they tell you is, like, they're the last of the Mohicans. And then no. the poor guy kills himself at the end. And, no, he falls Spoiler off. Spoiler alert. And then the girl kills himself, and there's that whole she kills monster. herself when Uncas dies. Stop. Yes. Okay. That, that, that nice. movie is my jam. Don't. That movie was beautiful. <laughs> they, they, it is beautiful. They last to the Mohicans it, but they didn't achieve last to the Mohicans. Yeah. Um, so Heidi in the YouTube chat just said that there was a sale on stock music. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing seeing that comment. <laughs> um, I mean, look, there's other times in other shows, in other ways that people have used manipulative music. I cannot hear a single measure of anything from Schindler's List and not like immediately bust into tears. Like I hear those violins and I'm like, Wah! I mean, like, and that's ridiculous. I haven't watched Schindler's List since 1994, but it doesn't matter. It still does that to me. So I, I mean, I get why they used it, but it's stupid. And yeah. when I was watching it, because I was watching a screener, I thought it was like a placeholder that they were going to have something else in there eventually. And then they didn't. And I just think it's really funny. And did they talk about the song in the little um, after yeah. show that they do afterwards? I, I don't remember if they're not. tweeted about it. Not Matt B. Roberts, because let's just do a little aside yeah. right now. Guess who doesn't have a Twitter Jump account anymore? What? Yes, everyone wants to talk about the all the drama that has happened online with some of the uh, Outlander production folks. Matt B. Roberts deleted his Twitter because I guess someone went after him personally, which don't do that. That's weird. Don't go take it real life. Don't be weird online. Um, and then what else happened, Elise? You were mentioning more uh, drama. The weirdly sexually driven chick from EW said that Richard Rankin deserved an Emmy and people went fucking nuts and it lasted for like days uh, on both sides. So there was a lot. Mm. Uh, And then we had a tweet from DG that someone just sent us. Uh, Someone was asking her about Brianna and she says, well, it would have been nice if they had been able to find a wonderful actress who was blue eyed and six feet tall. But if they could only get one of those attributes, I'd go with a wonderful actress myself. And I took that to be bad, but I think she's saying Sophie is good. She is yes. saying that Sophie is good. She is saying Sophie is good. She has to say that. Yeah, she can. I don't have to say that. Um, and look, guys, if you're really going after, I don't I don't know if anybody that follows us or watches Hang Out is like going after Matt and Meryl online, like, you could don't go through my that. you could go through my timeline. I don't even at them ever in any way. Mm-hmm. I do mm-hmm. this, which they can watch or not watch. But here's the problem with like online drama. And I said this years ago when I told you about the fandom rules and how you're supposed to conduct yourselves online. Stay in your lane. Color on your own coloring sheets. Just talk about things amongst yourselves. You don't have to at the actors. You don't have to at everybody which i learned what snitch tagging was right exactly (laughs) you don't snitch tag into people's feeds don't do that shit and then don't come to people's blog posts and tell them how stupid they are like talk about it amongst your friends or on hangout lender but like don't go you don't need to do that it's a it's a waste of time and it does cause people to do things like flounce a platform which is what matt just did (laughs) i don't care that matt flounced the platform because again Go check my feet. I don't interact with him, but I enjoy interacting with you guys. And if you just came at me because of something I said or did, eventually I'd be like, man, dude, I'm flouncing this platform. You guys suck. So don't do that. Yeah. But don't anyway. go personal. If you have issues with what they're doing, be constructive. Do not be an asshole. Yeah. I mean, That's weird. yeah, it's very, it's very, very weird. Regardless, um, somebody else just said that the director requested um adagio because <laughs> he loved platoon uh, it's a it a dude? Trick, i think oh was this one a trick i didn't look it Maisie, up I Maisie, m-a-i-n-z-e-e which i was like that's a very odd name which is well, why i remember how it's spelled this oh. director also directed brianna to some really really terrible choices so i'm not really impressed <laughs> with their decision making 
It's also, a greatest um, hit. Somebody else just said. <laughs> Everyone knows that thing. Everyone knows Clearly. it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Somebody else said they were sick of um, John Gary Steele. Where is it? It's purely amuse. <laughs> this is what she said. <laughs> she had an issue with John Gary Steele's work before, but that idiot thought was dumb and filled with fake leaves found in the clearance bin at Michael's. No. That was hut was cheap AF. Like I could have lifted it up. It did not make me feel like Roger was really securely in any sort of. I did prison. wonder <laughs> how. Was, yeah, the door was secured. Out. I know, just like punch the door out, even though there's probably some dude standing in front of it. Like that was literally that was mainly how he stayed in there was there was a dude standing in front of it was the impression that I got. Yeah, also, I didn't see here. why didn't Roger do the old elementary school thing on like the sandbox where you use your feet to like dig like this? Like yes. you would be out of that thing. So quick. Don't use a little water scoop or whatever. Your fingernails. Hello. I'm going to have to Google this sandbox technique. Yeah. yeah or just like you poop. like do your feet forward, man. We don't do like that, that in Vermont. There's no, It's too cold. There's no sand. <laughs> we don't do sandboxes. No sand. No. That's no, no maybe. But. Oh. <laughs> My gosh. Um, let's discuss uh, the fact that, did we already discuss the fact that there's no Jamie and Claire in this episode? We did a little bit. A this little bit. Jamie, this, I mean, they're there, but they don't actually have any. Yeah, there's the Jamie stuff. letter, and That's there's like a little episode. montage. <laughs> I know this is the second episode of the series a season where they have not really been a thing. They have not what been featured. What was the other one? I don't even uh, remember. The one uh, where all the sixties. Yeah, the other, the other oh, one okay. I reviewed. No, it wasn't the festival one. It was the one, it was after that, I think, because the festival one. Oh, no, it was when she went through the stones. Yeah. 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 That, the one. Oh, I where so she, I've gotten no where Jamie we spent Claire. 10 minutes of her in the Highlands. Yeah. And then all that time with, what's her yeah. name? Mary. And that's what I was thinking about today, because maybe we could, well, should we talk jailbreak and then talk what we think is going to happen next week? I fucking love jailbreak. So let's talk jailbreak. <laughs> I love the jailbreak. jailbreak. You could give me a jailbreak or a high stakes, you know, bank robbery any day. And I'm like, so in there. And that's also, why I like solo, even though you hated it, Beth. But <laughs> <laughs> I think this is probably one of the more exciting sequences that Outlander has done in quite some time. And I thought it was cool because they brought together characters that hadn't been together. There were stakes. They might be blown up, which I think they could have heightened even more, but whatever you know, baby steps. So Caesar, is that how you say it? Yeah. Caesar. 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 Uh, fucking killed it this episode. Oh, he was good. He He's was very so good. They had like a fucking $25,000 jib shot of him that I was like, I'm here for this. <laughs> uh, I was, I was in it. Thanks jib op, whoever you were. That was great. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, them getting into that like formation, like just like you oh, know, like I was like, yeah, that was awesome. I was like yes. <laughs> that was, I was great. living for that direction. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I definitely got some some Jamie vibes from. I got like little baby Jamie and Claire vibes from him and um, Lauren Lyle this episode. Know, she cracks me I, up. I love them together. I love Lauren Lyle and Caesar, and I love that they mentioned like. What would Jamie and Claire do? Like, oh, I know. They we're were going to so like cute. channel them. He and, also like, just has this face of like, oh, fuck, I'm in trouble. And she's like, I know everything. Like, don't. You're playing with thimbles. Like, what else would I assume you're doing? <laughs> I did like him like, kind of, you know, figuring out what he was going to do and her coming across. And just, I mean, it was just a, it was a very, very good married moment. It was very mm -hmm. sweet. And also, like, I love the fact that he's. He did learn from Jamie. Like he had his own skills when when Jamie picked him up, and then they they flourished into something really cool. And I liked that he was doing what he needed to do with that. That was really awesome. Also, that, Cesar like, Dumbo in real life is fucking hilarious, and all he does is like go to Celine fashion shows and like live it up in Paris. And I would like to be him. I would like to be Lauren Lyle. Her life looks like, awesome too, and she's hilarious. Oh, it, it is. She's so funny. Her and how she hangs out with Nell Hudson all the time. I'm like, oh, this it's is so amazing. cute. Right. Yeah, it's very cute. They're so adorable. I love her. I want to be her yeah. way more than I want to be anybody else. For sure. Place. And here's the thing. They this these these parts are supposedly written by the same people. 
So where is the disconnect between, obviously, the disconnect is the actors, but, you know. I think the disconnect is trying really, really hard to shoehorn in some sort of, like, literary, thematic, like, what they think is, like, this erudite story arc, for like, especially for Roger and Brianna. Roger mm -hmm. and Brianna aren't that deep. They aren't that interesting and they aren't nothing about them is when you, when you look at Jamie and Claire, Jamie, especially even Lord John, Jamie, Lord John, Claire, they have a very complex set of like worldview and belief system and the way that they do, especially Jamie, the way that he does things and the reason that he does them. It is a endless well of interesting rationalizations, interesting character traits. And there's just a lot going on with Jamie Fraser and Claire Fraser and, and, and Lord John and Roger and Brie aren't that interesting. They're, they are oh, yeah. shallow puddles in comparison. Well, yeah. And they're trying really hard to shoehorn all of this. I mean, Roger giving this big long speech in the hut about his love and how stupid he is, is legitimately made me hate the character. Yeah. Because it was so There are way more things that he's done that I've been more pissed off at than that. I, well, sure, I actually I, liked that. I've been pissed off at him. Because he I, was just so fucking frustrated in his weird, like, 1960s way where he's like, I'm an idiot. I was like, that would be me, honestly. Yeah, but it's not going to be easily rectified in one episode now. we've They've set up him having enough issues with what's happened that it's going to drag on a little bit. Yeah. And he still right. has not dealt with his own culpability in any aspect right. of anything that has happened to him. That's that true. little, that entire speech was a, he was, self, he was self flagellating over his choices, but only the ones that, that didn't work out, you know, like, I mean, like not anything that he did to anybody else, but the ones that have caused he did him forget, pain. Like he did forget like, Oh, she said no. And then I got really pissed off for, and douchey he forgot he, that part of the speech <laughs> all of that how many times did that happen like okay i slut shamed her and then i got mad that she wouldn't marry me and then i left and then i refused to call her and then i um you know hopped and, and stalked her through time and space and he didn't say anything about the fact that like maybe she didn't want him to come he was all it was all about his heroism he didn't have yeah any he's real a man he didn't have any real self-reflection about the things that he did that caused Brianna pain or the things that he did that were um, less than heroic in his own estimation. He had none of that, no self-reflection, no revelatory thoughts about that. It was all this like huge pity party literally was all he was doing. Right. And, and that was supposed to be his like moment where he became a character who, who, who we're supposed to, root for a character that right. we're supposed to see. I don't think that him. was the, you, we want to root for him moment to me. It was when he like turned back around to, even though he's not helping any, you know, he thinks he's helping it's typical Roger. He thinks he's helping. And, you know, he probably isn't when he turned around to go back and throw the barrel of something explosive on the guy. But then I he says back to the idiot hut. Yeah. And idiot is what he's relating to his own, uh, stupidity in loving Brianna. All of the things that he thinks he does, he's doing like out of some like blind devotion love that makes him an idiot. And everything that he has done that has caused him to be in the place, the time and the place that he is makes him an idiot. And he says, after he does a heroic thing, supposedly saving this guy's life, back to the idiot hut, equating it with another mistake that he's made that has put him back in this place. Uh, his love for this, you know, for his fellow man or whatever has put him in this bad place. He still has taken no response, real responsibility because he just thinks it's like, I'm so, uh, this is what I'm trying to get to. I'm so honorable. Mm -hmm. I love her so much that I followed her through time. I love her so much that I couldn't let her be alone. I love this guy so much, even though I just met him, that I brought myself back into captivity. I'm and look what it got me. I'm so honorable, but it makes me dumb. Yeah. That's his speech. And that is shitty. Yeah, I don't very care. martyr, martyr. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. care about that guy at all. Yeah. And the sad thing is in the book, at least for me, that section of him, when him and Brianna are separated and he's going 
she's like resting on her laurels over at River Run, and Roger is going through this major character arc. He's be he's becoming a man from where he began in this entire camp Mohawk camp setting. And they're completely glossing over some really uh, great moments for they, him. I really think they're doing that character in particular such a major disservice. I, since episode like three, I'm like, okay, this is sort of, maybe he's still like Roger. And then as it's gone on, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And that whole slut shaming thing it's so hard to have any empathy for that character. And I love that character. Mm -hmm. And I really like Richard. And I just feel like, here's this terrible writing. Good luck, yeah. bye. Yeah. I haven't read book four, but it's definitely different than Roger in book two and three. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean, even, even the way that he proposes to her, um, in the books is is different and, and has its a different set of motivations than what than what this one did. And you know, I just I don't care about him. I don't really care about her journey with Stephen Bonnet. Like they haven't really given me a whole lot to like grasp onto. And I want to. I want to care about that. And I just don't at this point. Um but I was really disappointed with the fact that they wanted this to be his, you know, Emmy show or whatever. They wanted to really showcase Rick and what they gave him was a uh, just pablum of of like male tears, um, and you know even him turning around and saving this guy was so. It, it just it, the motivations behind it. He he looked like he was just irritated that he could hear him screaming. It was like if I can get farther <laughs> enough away where I can't hear this guy screaming, I'll be good. But I can't. I can't run that so I fast. Have to go back. He's <laughs> screaming too loudly. So if somebody can like turn the string so that I don't have to hear it anymore, then maybe I won't have to turn back. I really think like if he had gotten farther enough away, he would have just kept going. So that's, it, 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 it's just, it falls, it falls very, very short of what that character should be, what he should be going through and what he should be feeling. I don't, yeah. And I kind of don't care because again, I want to see Jamie and Claire. <laughs> I, 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 that's what I'm here for. And yeah, but what are they doing? Hiking through the freaking woods some more? Oh. Yeah, that's kind of, that's they, kind of my question. Of like already everybody, been at the Mohawk camp. <laughs> well, everybody on Twitter is like, we want to see Jamie and Claire, but I'm like, what are we going to see them doing besides what they're already doing? Well, they're supposed to be rescuing Roger from yeah. the Mohawk. Supposed to be rescuing in and this moment. A deal. In this moment, they're yeah. they're there when the when the priest is there. Yeah, Claire's They're, holding the baby when the mom jumps on the fire. They like, barter for all of this to happen. Yeah. That's what so. they should be doing. Um, I want to take it back to the jail scene <laughs> because okay. Twiddly D tweeted, do we think that there will be any consequences to the fact that instead of one of Bonnet's henchmen blowing up the place, it was Murtaugh's rescue gang, the regulators. Dude, doing I, don't the even, I don't even know what the hell they're going to do with Murtaugh. Like, <laughs> I'm... I'm beyond. Well, not that uh, I don't like it. I'm just like, where the fuck are we going? Yeah, I think it it presents a really interesting, some interesting options that they're going to be exploring, and for Lord John to be there and see that it was hit, uh, Murta and the regulators and Fre uh, Fergus who did this. Yeah, and we know he's a pretty honorable guy. And at the same time, there's no other, there's nobody else to. I guess say who it was. I mean, they killed. Didn't they kill the guards, or did they just? I mean, no. Brianna was like, "We got to take them out." Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so they don't kill well, anyone. But, Lord, but... but they did ask. Lord John asked. They said, "Oh, do you know where they're taking him?" And Lord John was like, "No, I don't." Even Brianna gave him a look. She reacted to something. It was a miracle. <laughs> They're doing one of those wings. <laughs> Barely. She's like, "I'm uh, sky." I definitely think it will all come back next season because the regulators will be probably, hopefully, made into a bigger part of this storyline. I would crack up if they just drop it off. Because yeah. here's the thing. And next week, Myrta is in River Run with Jocasta. And we have been right, saying- Right, and there was like some weird slap going on in the She like preview. looks like she throws, better... a, throws a drink at him. So we've been saying from, from the beginning and knowing that Myrta was going to survive instead of in the books having died, that he's going to take the place of Duncan Ennis and yeah. eventually marry Jocasta if that's the case. And if that's beginning here, I would crack up 
if the entire regulators plot was dropped next season in favor of Myrta just marrying Jocasta. That would be ridiculous and stupid. <laughs> they just drop it. I I wouldn't be shocked. I would I've, not be shocked if that if they did that. Oh my god. I I will be so sad cuz it's been the maybe the most interesting plot point that they've come up with. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's word. a distinct possibility that they're going in that direction. Uh, so that let's talk about it. We have one episode left. We know we have a huge chunk of story left in Drums of Autumn story to get to. What's going to happen next episode? What's your predictions, Andy? I mean, how... So they have to get... <laughs> Roger, get him back to River Run for Claire. Because I try not to watch the like coming up next week. So I didn't even watch that. So that, that whole either. slap thing. So they have to get Roger, get back to River Run. Is Roger going to walk back himself? I don't know. I don't. Is Claire going to get the back? Baby. Yeah. Deliver the baby. Uh, Jamie and Brianna have some sort of, you know, they get over it moment. They got to get back to Fraser's Ridge. At this some is all point, after Roger what has the Mohawk. Yeah, this Guys, is all yeah. We're not not to spoil basically that. they're saving half of this for the premiere of season five. None of this is happening. No, how could next week? That None of be? Yeah. So next week, from what I can tell from the couple of clips that are in the upcoming, next week is going to be them getting to the Mohawk camp, them trying to figure out how to rescue Roger once they get there. So there's going to be probably, I would say, halfway through some sort of Mohawk, you know, skirmish where they, they get Roger and then they get back to River Run. Brianna at, this, at the same time, Myrta and Brianna and Lord John are going to be back at River Run and eventually Brianna is going to go into labor. Guess Cut. who's not going to be there? Claire. Fucking yeah. Jamie is not going to be there. And let me do you see the look. Oh. You see the look on my face. I forgot about that. About little that. Bit? You're right. Look, look at my face yeah. at Jamie not being there for Brianna's that's, giving birth. That's I the am, best part of that book. Yeah. That's one of the best things that ever happens to Jamie in his whole damn life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Legitimately, one of the best moments of his life. And guess what's not going to happen next week. <laughs> I'm if incredibly they take that out, it. I think fans will freak book fans. They, like, they pull up as she's going into <laughs> oh, guys. guys. No, 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 no. That's why Matthew Roberts left Twitter. He didn't want to. He didn't want to experience the fallout. That might of that be it. happening in the finale. Oh, it I love be. your conspiracy it, theory. That's so true. Oh God! Now Twitter's going to explode. So <laughs> this little picture right here. Can y'all see? It's yeah, I was wondering white. if we were going to talk about that. She's read, running read, toward read something, it. and she's um, not pregnant. It's on our Insta story, so I can't. I have to like oh. save it and then retweet it. Anyway, it's Brianna running out of River Run, not oh, pregnant, no. not oh, even no. remotely pregnant. What's she running towards? Let's think about it. She's running towards Roger. No, um, who's bringing Roger to River Run? Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. and Claire. No. So, at the very least, Jamie, right? Maybe Claire went ahead. Maybe. Doubt it. Guys, they're not going to be there for the birth. If they take that out, that will be, that's, that's a high price. I cannot Maybe tell Lord you. John will be there. Yeah. Uh, Lord John is 100% <laughs> capable. He could give us <laughs> cesarean section. Like, I'm sure. <laughs> he is does not bring the emotional weight of having Jamie and Claire at the birth. I'm sorry. If they take that out, I don't even know. <laughs> I, I mean, don't know where to go. Pitchforks. Oh, for sure. Pitchforks for that. I, I, because there's, there's plenty of things that can change. There's lots of reasons to change lots of things. We've That's said that over and change. over and over again. The choice not to have them there for that, if that's what happens, is purely about time and about other emotional points that they want to make in this finale. One of those being Brianna and Roger's reunion and making that a bigger deal than 
Jamie and Brianna's oh, reunion. Yeah. And Jamie and Brianna's reunion is not them running together up on a beach mm -hmm. like the reunion, like the it end of season three. It is a slow three. burn. It's reunion. a slow burn of reunion of emotion. And yes. her giving birth and him helping and being there for that moment is the climax of their reunion. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to give it to us. And I'm real mad about it. So... <laughs> I just, I want everybody to go ahead and lower their expectations or go ahead and write your Twitter diatribes and your Twitter threads now for when it doesn't happen. So that we'll all be ready to just do it then because they're, they're not going to happen. And uh, honestly, I, I held out a little bit of hope. And then I saw that little clip of Brianna running on pregnant. And I was like, she's running to Roger. She's running to fucking Roger. She's running to fucking oh, Roger because Jamie and Claire went over the birth. Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What if Claire has to stay with Roger and she's running at Jamie? But then she, wait, she already had the baby. No, I'm trying to figure <laughs> this out. I'm trying to figure this out. See, oh, no, it's just not going to happen. And and, then, and there's other there's these other huge moments with Ian and the Mohawk. There's going to be yes. a lot of emotional points that happen, and they're not even building towards Jamie and Brianna coming to any kind of emotional conclusion. They haven't mm. been building towards that. They've been building towards getting Roger and Brianna Getting back Roger. together. Yeah. And if you think about it, when they cut the, when they when they very first broke the episodes for season four, we like two and a half years ago, where were their brains when they were like the big finale climax is going to be Roger and Brianna coming back together? The whole episode or the whole season apparently was about family and making a home together. Why is the finale not about getting all of their asses back to the back ridge to and part. having like a photo moment right. on the porch? It really cheapens Roger and Brianna's reunion if they do it at River Run and not after the birth happens and after Roger has a come to Jesus moment and comes back. It cheapens them coming back together because they've already cheapened their relationship to where so many people don't believe they're in love. So they need to earn the slow burn of them coming back together. You can't do that. I'm sorry. You can't cut that. Okay. So... Heidi in the YouTube thing just said, Claire is with Brianna pregnant at River Run. You see it in the preview. She tells Brianna that she needs to get her out. You cannot see Brianna in that little clip. You cannot tell that she's still pregnant. So I don't know that's for sure. But I'm hoping that it is. My dearest hope is that somehow Jamie and Claire find their way to River Run way before Roger does, okay? In the mm. book, it happens, but we already got see. Okay, in the book, he like decides to stay and wait and decide what he wants to do. He gives himself all of this space to decide whether or not he wants to come back to Brianna or not. All right, but we already had the moment where he found the stones, and you know, we didn't see him deliberate over any, anything. But we already also had this long. We don't have time for Roger to decide what he wants to do. Unless they want to just like do things quickly, have Jamie and Claire leave him by the side of the road somewhere and be like, okay, we'll see you at River Run, hmm. which doesn't sound like what Jamie wants right, to maybe, do because Jamie maybe has been talking about bringing him back. With Ian or something? And Ian has, I don't know what Ian does with the Mohawk, but maybe Ian is. <laughs> I don't want to ruin that for you. Native American no and there. is bonding with the Mohawk or something. And they're like, all right, Roger, you sit in the corner, I'll become a Mohawk. Uh, it, it boggles the mind that they wrote in things like that entire unnecessary Leary storyline, wandering through woods for two episodes behind the Mohawk, and yet we're now at a, p a point in the series where let's cram it all into one episode or we just won't do it. Like, what, who's making these choices? Like, the Leary storyline was the dumbest thing ever and wasted like is an this, entire episode. Is it longer? Is the finale going to be longer? Am no. I making? No. 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 <laughs> an hour. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of hoping for like a Game of Thrones, like two hour mini movie. Yeah, but I was like, maybe it's an hour happening. and a half. I've literally been telling myself it's going to be an hour and a half. Yeah. If it was an hour and a half, I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> Figure your shit out way before you break episodes and figure out the best way to have the season run and don't do things like the stupid Lalabrug episode that doesn't make any sense with friggin' Leary. Don't do stuff like that. Don't just, they just don't, they aren't good with pacing. And now I'm mad. <laughs> it, so. it will shock me if they literally thought that would be okay to cut 
Claire and Jamie, either one or both from yeah. that birth scene. That would be a bridge too far. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that's I, what Twitter I, say. <laughs> I think that they're going to want Claire there because obviously anytime Claire can do something medicinal or surgical, they're like, yes, let's do this. And um, that might happen. I mean, um, Heather, is it Heather or Heidi that might be saying that, that she might be pregnant? Um, that might happen, but I really just, oh, I just need Jamie to be there. I don't even care if Claire's there. I want <laughs> Jamie to be there. It's important. Right. It's very important. Um, a lot of people have been saying that they're going to be upset that it doesn't end at the gathering. They think that this is one of the best endings of all of the books that right. ends the gathering. Yeah, Sam still maintains this is like his favorite finale. He says that every year. He's, but oh. um, <laughs> You really say that? He yeah. says that every year. He said it like he's, a couple he's, times. He's very, you know, he's on board for being a good guy. He's he doesn't. doing his job. <laughs> he also doing enjoys it when it's like a lot of fighting and all of that kind of stuff, which he's going to get plenty of like Mohawk fights and stuff. So he likes that kind of stuff. He's not into like the slow moments with Brianna. I'm just being, let's be real. Um, but a lot the of people that there's not going to be the gathering. And despite the fact that that is, it is one of the best endings of the books, of the ones that I've read. Um, I do like it. I was going to say, people describe the whole gathering to me as like a giant, like circle jerk of Scottish people. It, they, it's the <laughs> gathering from Fiery Cross that they're saying is the Oh, is that okay, okay, okay. Okay. It's okay. the next book. Yeah. So it long. starts, the gathering starts yeah. at the end of Drums of Autumn and then it continues for like half of the Fiery Cross. And you're like, well, I thought it was one day at the end of Drums of Autumn. We're doing the whole thing for another like 27 <laughs> okay. chapters. Okay. But at the end of Drums of Autumn, it is really kind of cool yeah. because they all stand up and are like, the Frasers are here. And the very last line of the book is Brianna standing up, deciding that it's been a year and a day since she's been with Roger, since they were hand fast. And she decides that they want to continue to be married. And she stands up and says, the Mackenzies are here. Oh, yeah. that's so it's, it's, it's a great ending. It's the perfect cap on this part of the story. And it's, 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 it's not happening. It's good. Um, it w I don't think it would fit in this season. I'm fine no. with not having that. What Pick fits in this way. season, the gathering. I think that's like a season five premiere. Episode. Right. Even having her say the McKenzie's are here is not good for this because he hasn't been in talking about being Roger McKenzie. She hasn't been talking about really being Brianna McKenzie. That doesn't yeah, make any they, sense. They've run out of time. They could have done all this. <laughs> exactly. But the best ending for this particular season is somehow them all back at the Ridge. Mm -hmm. because they made such a big fucking deal about the fucking ridge being with yeah. Fergus and Marsley with Fergus who are and Marsley, moving to the ridge. Who are going to be there. Yeah. So there's that. That's a good ending. It also surprised me that they wouldn't want two gatherings to mirror the gathering that Roger and Brianna are at at the beginning. And then well, the that's gathering what I was thinking when end. you said like, Oh, the Mackenzies are here. It's like the, it's a very the book they were doing. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, Which was why really it actually odd. annoyed me that it was in that episode. That they were at a gathering and he said that. Because yeah. it felt like it was odd. pulling it from the end. I don't know. We just talked a lot about something that we don't know if it's even going to be, if we need to even be mad about it, you guys. True. <laughs> we'll see. Preemptively soon. upset about next week. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be waiting up very late uh, this week to watch it. <laughs> yeah. See, Brittany Bats on the YouTube chat just said, you never know, the running scene might be a fake out. It yeah. What be. if she's dreaming? She what if it's be dreaming? It. What if it's Dallas good. and she wakes up and she's home? This is all the JR is in the shower and we're all happy. <laughs> that would oh, be really goodness. good. And how are they gonna fit like a really good sex scene of Jamie and Claire in there too? Come on, guys. Not a That's good finale not without. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't care about that. I was gonna say, I was like, you're I thought you did. like the sex scenes are okay, but I thought you weren't like, yes, let's do it. I'm not. <laughs> But we have not seen Jamie's scars all season. Because that mm -hmm. shit takes two and a half hours to put on. That's why she's wear. always on top these days. <laughs> you know, from a production standpoint, I understand. Yeah. Because <laughs> that shit is like, oh, God. No one wants yeah, to. I'm tired that. just thinking about it. If they can do Mercha's wig that well, they have time <laughs> for Jamie's back scars. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> They don't have time for Jamie's hair, but they can do Myrta. Myrta Beth, looks great. Beth, have we talked about you getting your uh, your CV ready to send over to be a script supervisor? <laughs> I saw that. 
Yes, so I'm what, so what ready. What do you think supervisors do? Is it just the continuity that like yeah, people say that? Because I've seen that before. It's only continuity. It is, it's yeah. like them reading through the script while it's happening and making notes and also taking pictures of the setup. Yeah, that's like 10% of the job though. <laughs> wow, I'm sure they yeah. do lots more, but <laughs> that is the... Uh... <laughs> Do you, do you not see me like worming my way into being like, excuse me, this is how, this is how the, uh, have like a story consultant. They yes. literally have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Or they don't listen to whoever they do have yeah. anyway. I'm sure do, like there have been times where Diana has been like, uh, no. And they've been like, ah, we're doing it anyway. Yeah. So she's like, oh, that's going to cause problems later on. And they're like, eh, we don't care. Pretty, so. Yeah. I've actually read that. Yeah. They're like, oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> Heather Hargrave just said, Beth should just run the whole damn show. I should. I have a BA in English from the University of Memphis, and I homeschool my kids. Look at me being perfect for running a whole show. <laughs> you can run my show if I ever have one. Thank you very much. Can't wait. All, All right, right, guys. God knows yeah. what it would be about, but you got it. All right. I'm there for it. <laughs> um, I think that's it for Providence, you guys. Thanks, everyone, for tweeting. There's tons of stuff. Yes. Some of good tweets. We'll yes. try to share them. We will share them after the fact. And um, join us next week for the finale. We'll find out if we have to, like, you know, Cry. eat our words for Cut being upset or, you know, be very excited. Either way. Either way, I'm going to be mad because I was either wrong or I was right. <laughs> so, so basically, we're fine. <laughs> Next week's going to be a shit show. This is for me personally. It's, that's the title of the episode. Best personal shit show. Yeah. <laughs> episode 412. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us and we will see you next week. Bye.